Hey there, Scipio here, and welcome back to Diff School. This is the old pinion uh, gear. So why are we tearing it down? We're gonna tear it down so I can measure the shim that's between the pinion gear and the pinion bearing, because that shim is controlling our pinion depth dimension. And we wanna know what that size is because we're gonna copy it. Okay, so it basically saves us the trouble of figuring that out in another way. If you were to go buy a couple of gear install manuals or spend a lot of time reading OEM gear installation procedures, they all have a mathematical plan for determining pinion depth. Um, and this is I would say a bit of the potential gray area from shop to shop to decide how they want to determine what pinion depth to use. What I do that seems to work for me is I, I copy the old pinion depth put the gears in, take a look at what those results were, and I go from there. Especially in this case, right, where it was a manufacturer install yeah. setup, do you run the risk of copying somebody else's bad setup? No, because we are just using that as a start point. Okay. See how this, how deformed this is from the floor. Right. One time use. And this is our our pinion depth shim that the OEM used. So that's what we pulled out to copy. Yeah. First pinion race. which we use these aluminum, you know, industry standard uh, kits here to tap them in. So we're really just making sure this doesn't jam while we're pushing. As long as this spins by hand, I figure that it's not wrecking the cage, the bearing cage. So up here I can see how many, how much pressure we're putting on it. So now we're finally to the stage where we take this carrier and ring gear assembly 
and uh, start trying to fit it into the housing. And this is sort of the fit and measure and test and fit and shim and test and fit uh, part of things. And I'm not going to lie, I watched Paul uh, insert and remove this assembly, I don't know, six or seven, maybe even eight times during the process of this. And he explains it here in a minute, but basically he's working his way up uh, to tightness, leaving um, a backlash, a felt backlash, but sort of sneaking into it as opposed to starting too tight and then uh, and then having issues trying to back out. And he explains why here in a second. Um, but anyway, uh, this is, uh, you know, we're getting close, but uh, this is sort of the... Uh, got to feel it, got to test it, and then here pretty soon we start measuring it. Um, and uh, and we're going to leave this video once we get this thing sort of uh, in place. But I uh, hope you guys are enjoy this. Uh, here you go, back to Paul. Like that's getting more snug, but there was no feelable backlash. Now okay. there is. But I don't know how much, but we fine tune that as we go along. So right now, just by feel, I know I do have some backlash. We have no idea how much until I tighten this down. But what you can't do is you can't just blindly tighten this because these bolts can just chip the teeth. Like if there's no movement in here, you're just jamming uh, the teeth together. So you can just be like, oh, yeah, tight my wrench, do, 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 do. You know, and you just hear this crack or snap or whatever. Or or crack it worse, crack it and not even notice you cracked it. You know, crack it enough that it's got a crack in it, but a piece doesn't fall off. So to say maybe you don't notice it. So when you're working on this, you kind of keep closing in on getting it tighter. You don't start off like, because you don't know where that point is yet. So as you tighten for the first time, I just got to know that I always keep having, I always have some backlash. So as long as you kind of hear that still, you know you haven't jammed it. current backlash is 17 so we're gonna have to adjust that a little bit tighter before we can do our first pinion depth check now if we were trying to teach someone how to do gears we we'd write that 17 down and then we'd make a, a note of what amount of shims we're adding to what side and then the, we'd make a in, for someone learning it to see how it progresses. So now what I'm going to be doing is being more particular about when I pull this out what goes where. Now I'm going to see if I can add 20 thousandths to this side. I don't know if that will fit. This is 12 thousandths. I'm going to try to see if I can sneak in 20,000 or close to that. This is where clean hands matter for handling these shims. Well, that's just to the driver's side. I'm going to throw this in and See what kind of an impact it made. Definitely getting tighter. What's your final target? Don't know. It's different on everyone? Yep. If this were a 
four changing carriers. We would have, would have recorded that better. But this is going to be more performance based correction as compared to mathematical based correction. I don't know if that makes sense. Bob. Yep. So this isn't falling out anymore. It's starting to get snug. Bam! So now we're eight thousand for seven. Beep, 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 beep. Seven thousand. Nice. So that was just a kind of a lucky guess based on you know a little bit of, a little bit of a good guess and a little bit of luck.